Alright, so I got on this big rant. I forgot to get back to these comments, so let me try to run through these. Alex MES, he says, I often look superficially, and I think I understand, but sometimes I am wrong. However, these are the cases in which I always learn something more. Thank you very much. No, thank you, Alex MES. Appreciate that. Even Gog and Magog are after the thousand years. Uh, well, uh, well, I, and w when you're referring to, uh, oh, how am I gonna, how am I gonna explain this? So when you're referring to, um, Revelation 20, um, yes, this is in reference to after. The thousand years and uh, it's when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven all right so um, we'll leave it at that let's leave it at that now the Gog and now I gotta say this now the Gog and Magog of the Old Testament this is before and this is none of this is literal here uh, and like it is in the Old Testament so this is really this is what's really gonna happen this is the tr the real event all right and so let me let me clarify this what we read in Revelation what we read in the Bible is real uh, what we see with our eyes is not real okay think about that so where are we at here? Because in reality, it, it is the second time on Earth, but you actually meant the three that does not exist. So the third that does. So the idea that Jesus is going to come in the clouds of heaven and then go away, and then come back—that's nonsense. It's people that lack the ability to connect the dots, right? People that um, perhaps are still growing and they're still learning, and they're not quite there yet. All right, so when when they start splitting these things up, yeah, you know, I once heard somebody say that Jesus is going to come back over 20 times. I'm not kidding you. Somebody as smart as anybody I've ever met in my entire life, uh, crazy smart, and could quote the Bible like that. I mean, you, it was incredible. But um, the fact is, he was wrong. He lacked the ability to connect the dots, and so. You know, when, you, when you've got it uh, narrowed down to uh, this idea that Jesus is going to re return twice, man, you're almost there. You're almost there. All you have to do is connect the last dot, the last two dots, right? Connect those two dots together, and you got it. Hot dog. Pretty simple. All right, so in Alex MES, he says English is not his first language that's okay your English is probably better than mine and unfortunately for me English is the only language I know so Alex Mia so do you think the beast and the false prophet have already passed no 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 because for the beast to already have passed would mean the end of the world has already come and the end of the world I'm, I'm telling you, this world that we're in right now, it's coming to an end. This is a wicked and corrupt world. This is not paradise. I guarantee it. Alright? So if you think this is paradise, buddy, you're in big trouble. Right? So the beast... Now, the beast is just the fourth beast of Daniel. Alright? And it's just the king... The kingdom of this world. And uh, the kingdom of... Uh, in spirit... Uh, in spirit of Babylon, right? Spiritual Babylon. So this is an ongoing thing, and like Daniel talks about, at the end of the fourth beast, the fourth beast is the end of the world. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. I right, put all these pieces together, and you know that this is world is coming to an end. And the false prophet. Um, this alludes to anybody teaching anything falsely. Alright, so 
anybody that teaches against Jesus Christ is a false prophet. There's not. Uh, look, there's a lot of people out there that are teaching this idea that the this false prophet in uh, it's mentioned, I think, a few times in the Book of Revelation. People are out there teaching it as though you got Superman, you got Spider Man, you got Batman and Robin, and you got False Prophet Man. That False Prophet is not a superhero. All right, it's it, it it's just a somebody that teaches falsely and, and represents all the false teachings in the world today, just as the Beast, Spiritual Babylon represents all spiritual wickedness in the world today uh, people are making way too much out of it all right but you know when you make more out of it than what it actually is you're able to make movies you're able to write books and you're able to produce TV series and people eat it up I know there's no doubt about it but it's not necessary it's not of any value at all and so anyways, it makes no sense that it refers to the youth of Jesus on one thing I can agree. That there will be no other coming, i.e. three, because after his return, he will be with us and the thousand year period is the reward for his chosen ones. Okay, hold on a second now. There's a lot on the table right there. Alright, it makes no sense that it refers... I think he's talking about when I say that the thousand years is from the time of Jesus to the time of his return from the time of baby Jesus to the time of his return but and that's uh all I'm really saying is that the ministry of Jesus Christ you know when he um, when he brings us the a new covenant a better covenant built on better how how can I award this exactly correctly? Oh, I can't even. Oh, I can't remember anything in the Bible. Now maybe they changed it too. Right? There's this guy, Nelson Mandela. Well, never mind. Hebrews 8, but now has he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises so my point is that Jesus did all these things and so uh, because of this better ministry because of this better covenant with better promises this is the thousand year period that it will be fulfilled at the coming of you know of him and his angels when we are changed in a twinkling of an eye, right? So that's from this, from the time of Jesus to the time of his return. From the time that he has made everything better, uh, built on better promises, to the time of his return. That's what I'm saying is uh, the thousand years. Because it's unlike any other time in history. It's, it's unlike any time before baby Jesus. And it's not going to be like this after he returns, because when he returns, we are changed in the twinkling of an eye. Right? So, then the judgment is made, and the dead are... And there's no more wickedness. There's no more sorrow. No more crying. No more pain. And no more death. So, this time period that we're in right now, that's the thousand years. It's a unique time period. It wasn't like this before, and it's not going to be like this after. Right? So in some in some respects, it's better than what it used to be. But there's a guarantee that it's going to be way better in the future when our Lord Jesus returns in the clouds of heaven. All right. So, and then... Uh, Again, I gotta, I gotta address this here. The thousand-year period is the reward for his chosen one. So, uh, I don't know who, you, who's given out this thousand-year period reward. I don't want no part of it. The reward that I want 
is everlasting life. All right. The thousand, I don't want a thousand year period where people are getting their heads chopped off. All right. And people are dying. That's not no reward that I am, that I care for. You keep that for yourself. Okay. The reward that I'm after is everlasting life. All right. The new Jerusalem will arrive after the thousand years, so it is written, and also the rebirth of the dead, two resurrections, will take place later. It speaks of one and two resurrection of the dead, not of another coming after a thousand years. So, uh, if we get technical here, let, I mean, we're going to have to get technical, aren't we? So let's get technical. Alright, so, we see this mention of first resurrection. figure out how to spell there it is first resurrection first resurrection okay so let's go and let's look up second resurrection and there it is no nope, that's not it it's not in the Bible so let's try to understand what this means first resurrection all right so I'm gonna point you to Let's go to Daniel. Let me think about this. Oh, goodness sakes. Can, oh, right there it is. Nice. Alright, so Daniel 12, 2. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now, if you want to split hairs, all right, and you want to make a big deal out of this first resurrection, all right, and that's what people are doing. So let's get into it. There's a resurrection of the living, and there's a resurrection of the dead. The first resurrection is those of us that are saved. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, boom, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. This is the first resurrection. And if you want to get even more technical, Jesus is the first resurrection. He resurrected from the dead and ascended to heaven. And now, those of us that are born of God are partakers of that resurrection and it will be completed or fulfilled at the return of our Lord Jesus Christ who comes in the clouds of heaven and in a moment in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed you know first the dead in Christ and then those of us that remain that are alive and remain shall be lifted up with him so that's one part of the resurrection the other part of the resurrection is uh, the unsaved let's get there so the unsaved are also resurrected judged in uh, there's a you know people want to make make a big deal are they alive forever or are they dead forever are they in torment forever or are they completely erased forever and I don't want to get into any sort of dispute with anybody about this I believe that they are um, erased forever and that's there's no greater torment and then realizing you know there's no greater torment than realizing that you are going to be erased forever that's the worst ever the worst thing that could happen to anybody All right. and so this shame and everlasting contempt I contend is being erased forever so I don't want to get into that who cares I'll let the people that are not saved try to figure all that out I don't care about that sort of stuff that's just what I believe. If you want to believe that you're going to be in a fiery pit and tortured, um, you know, every day for all eternity, that's fine. You know, that's okay. I'm not going to be there, so I'll let you teach that and preach that and 
you know, make videos, write movies, and all that sort of stuff about that sort of stuff that I don't, I'm not going to have any involvement in. All right. All right. So again, that I mean, that's really that's all I wanted to point out there. That this there's not a second resurrection that occurs after the first resurrection, and the the only way that you can teach that is if you're going to have to teach this idea that there are zombies running around. All right. And if that's what you believe, if you believe there's a resurrection that's going to occur on the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, and then at a later time period, another resurrection of saved people, right. I'd like, for one, I'd like to see you show me where that's at in the Bible. It's not in my Bible. Now, maybe Nelson Mandela wrote another Bible or something, I don't know. But it's not in my Bible okay and then also I want you to put some thought into this idea just expound upon it elaborate on it let me hear uh, all everything that comes to your mind in regards to this you know zombie eclipse thing that you're preaching and teaching all right I just want to hear it man if you believe it just be honest tell me what you're thinking all right so the a Maria or Ava Maria. I like it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It means Hail Mary. That's all right. So, uh, you know, giving honor to Mary. That's great. Yeah, that's great. I think the problem that a lot of people have is that um, Catholics teach that Mary is a co-mediator with God. So, our, so Jesus or with Jesus. So Jesus and Mary are just co-mediators, uh, mediators. Excuse me. So you can go to heaven through Jesus, or maybe you don't like Jesus. You can go to heaven through Mary. Both ways get you to heaven, huh? They're both co -medi They're both co-mediators. I can't even say that word. But hey, I mean, if they're co-mediators, then hey, you don't like the one, you can go after the other, right? Except that's not in the Bible. Oh, or maybe they, maybe the Catholics got a Nelson Mandela Bible or something, but it's not in my Bible. All right, so and I've. Ricky Jacobs, I've heard people say that China has an army of 2 million. I think that's supposed to be 200 million. Uh, doesn't matter, anyway. So it must be China. But I was told them, this is the wrath of God. If you're still here, the Chinese army is the least of your worries. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. If you're still here, the 200 million, it don't mean look you're in trouble buddy so no that's a great point all right so that's enough I've ranted enough haven't I all right, so I appreciate these comments and I want to encourage you all to uh, share your thoughts with me uh, you know let me know where your confusion is or where we're you know we have different opinions anything at all if you think I'm dumb stupid and ugly and all that sort of. I want to hear it too. That's fine. Okay. If I guess if there was one thing that I would ask is keep your comments clean. You know, just in case. I mean, represent yourself like these guys. All these people, right or wrong, whether I agree or disagree. You notice all these guys are have a clean language in their comments, and I appreciate that very much. Alright, so tell me your thoughts, man. If you think I'm wrong or if you think you have something more you'd like to add. Maybe I didn't explain something enough. Or maybe there's more I could have talked about. Anything at all. This, it helped, it, maybe it'll help you, but I'm telling you, it helps me just as much.